course, Roaring Moon, such a powerful card in those ancient decks that we've seen over time, but really in the Lost Zone deck, you can power it up an unconventional way, and a big card right away, the prize cards, that Spirit Tomb. You really gotta keep it, an eye out for that because of that better than misfortune ability to shut down Rotom. Yeah, shutting down Rotom, very, very clutch against all sort of control decks, but also double call risk experiment in the prize cards, whereas Nathan does have quite a few Pokemon, Mimic you probably less relevant against Cramorant uh, and Sableye attackers, but Luxray is super clutch, Regilecki can be clutch as well, so we're about to see how Nathan decides to navigate this matchup and if Drake switching cards will be enough to take down Nathan's Pokemon. We'll strap in, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting into this Swiss round nine. Winner goes to day two, loser goes home. Let's get into this. Dre will be starting things off. And while this isn't a comfe, you can still sit here and fleet foot it, but that's all that Dre has. No switching cards, or rather no comfe to use flower selecting for. It's just gonna be an attachment for the turn, passing things over to Nathan, and look, has a plethora of Arvin in hand, and one of the benefits to playing these Pokemon Heavy Ball cards, soon Heavy Ball means that if you do prize these Pokemon, it essentially acts as a free Pokemon search. And now can grab something like this Luxray out. Fang Snipe, such a great attack against such a trainer-heavy deck like Lawson. Yeah, discarding any Mirage Gates, any switching cards you find there, combining that with Airy as well can be devastating for Dre. And um, you know that these Lost Box decks are going to be picking very good cards that very useful cards with their flower selects with their choruses therefore finding spots to be able to airy are going to be um all over the place for nathan here so it looks like luxray will be the selection from the sisuian heavy ball i think the choice here now for nathan how does he want to play the rest of this turn out I'm sure arvin will most likely be the supporter card of choice now, Luxray V had a lot going for it, but sometimes you kind of forget it can also use that Forest Seal Stone. So I'll be very interested to see what tool card Nathan grabs from his deck. Does he want to provide a little bit more consistency here, get that Forest Seal Stone, or something like that Bravery Charm, which can add a little bit more HP to the variety of Pokemon that he plays in his deck. Now, it's very interesting to note that Nathan is playing like a hybrid of Pidgeot Control and Snorlax Stall. Right? He mm -hmm. does play two copies of Snorlax, does play that 2-2 two -two Pidgeot line as well. So we'll be able to combine the best of both worlds. And that Buddy Buddy Poffin feels like it's become a staple card in this Pidgeot deck and for great use. Get down multiple Pidgey, make sure that next turn, your opponent's going to need a lot to be able to wipe you of those Pidgeys and not allow P Quick Search to get online. Isaiah was a great example of how important it is for Quick Search to be online as quickly as possible, especially against aggressive decks like Lost Zone. Now, we're going to see no Rotom this turn, it seems. We could see Aggression, no. Yeah, no, Forest Seal Stone not exhausted just yet, just establishing the Luxray to take a peek, and now it's Andre to make something happen. Does have one of his two Colruses available right off the bat. And a lot of great cards here to think about. One of the easy choices to get rid of, definitely that Roxanne, and Nest Ball will also hit the Lost Zone, so that's two cards slowly fueling up the Lost Zone. Mirage Gate being turned on would be a big advantage here for Dre. Now, if Dre wants to start getting more cards into Lost Zone, we'll need to use up some of those switching cards. However, I don't see anything wrong with just being aggressive. I do believe he has the Lightning Energy available to him to just start using Lightning Rondo and take damage, on or deal damage onto a Snorlax. We could definitely see Snorlax get knocked out. That Luxray is not necessarily in range to be knocked out, but if you do attack into it, you kind of put Nathan in a little bit of a weird position where if he wants to use Fang Snipe, he would need to play the Penny and then also have a way to re-pivot back into the Luxray. But really using your... It's sort of a weird position because Dre has already found his Prime Catcher, had to keep it there off the Colrus. Against these control decks, you have something like Eerie, which can be disruptive. When it comes to playing this card down, it really feels like it's a hard decision because if you hold on to it too long, it gets discarded. If you play it too quickly, it doesn't have an effect. Where do you find that sweet spot in the middle? I mean, I generally don't think there is a sweet spot, unfortunately. Like, if you want to use those resources as soon as you get them, you really need to make them count, right? And you won't always have the options in play to make them count as you would like to. So mm -hmm. it's very, very delicate, as you mentioned. And uh, that's why I give a little bit of advantage to Nathan. If he's able to stabilize and get a little bit of a lock going, 
then it's going to be hard for Trey to keep all those valuable resources at his disposal for when he actually wants to play them. Let's not forget, Trey has two Culver's in the loss, or rather in the prize card, so we'll only have access to one more. So maybe this is the turn where you just kind of go all in, try and get aggressive. Don't give Nathan that time to get Pidgeot set up, and it looks like Dre will continue to draw through the deck. See that concealed card, discard, that basic dark energy, drawing two additional cards. Now here we go. Switch card is starting, so we're pivoting into these Comfey. Flower selecting to find more pieces. What do we see off of this? What is the choice here for Dre? And it will be yet another Nest Ball hitting the Lost Zone, so slowly losing access to some of those searching cards. It looks like it was that Hoopa EX instead as the choice to keep. I must admit, I confused, like, Dre has so much playing in his deck. <laughs> I generally thought he had a Lightning Energy, but no, it was just one of his multiple golden cards that he had available to him. But to mention now, there's two Switch cards having been utilized out of a potential four. Super heads the discard ball as well because the other card was apparently a super yeah. as well. I gotta wonder though, what is Dre planning to do with this Hoopa that he tried to conserve? Because it seems like it would be a Pokemon that could be easily trapped and Energy Crush does zero damage. There is that Bandit's Fist attack that does do 200 damage, but you can't use it the following turn, so then you sort of trap yourself and give your opponent a way that they can always like loop around it, they can put Mimikyu up and then play the Penny on it, so it doesn't seem like a great option. We'll see what Nathan has access to. It looks like there is Luminion plus four Sealstone and an Arvin in the hand. Uh, so with this Luminion coming down, it means we will see Pidgeot EX finally come into play. I think that may be what Nathan is looking for. Can even find something like Penny or Eerie, and this is going to hurt here for Dre. Has so many powerful item cards, switching cards, Mirage Gate, Super Rod, and that Prime Catcher will 100% be one of those selections Nathan can discard from Dre's hand. Yep, switching cards. Getting rid of all of those is going to be super, super important for Nathan. And now that's two switch cards, one switch, and one prime catcher. And you don't know your opponent's deck, but you have to expect the usual count as of late is four switch cards, three switches, and that one uh, prime catcher. So you're already halfway to your goal. And this is just icing on the cake this turn. Rare Candy Pidgeot as well can use Quick Search. I wonder here if Nathan can maybe play something like a Switch Cart and use Fang Snipe now that he has information about Trey's hand. Can maybe get rid of another one of those Super Rods, but it looks like doesn't have access to that. We will just see Rotom V be the selection. And Nathan just wants to keep filling the hand up. Isn't too concerned about putting a bunch of liable two prize Pokemon in play if it means he can build card advantage, especially against a deck like Lost Box that doesn't play hand disruption against Nathan's deck. Yeah, and you can see Nathan really playing it all, right? The Rotom, the Pidgeot, the Luminion, <laughs> all the support is here to help Nathan accomplish his control lock, and so far, so good. Let's see how Drake can pull this out. It's already off to a rough start. Some resources gone, Colors is in the lost, or in the prize cards, rather. And that Prime Catcher, no longer an option, and that's what we're talking about. Did you just play it and at least get effects out of yeah. it, or do you hope your opponent is not going for some resources? And that's just adding insult to injury. Using the Pokestop, that's a very risky card to use in this matchup, and that's a big risk that you take. Exactly like that. Two energy cards and a Pokemon that Dre is going to want to use, that Roaring Moon EX, hitting the discard pile, and with Super Rod already lost owned, with some more pieces hitting the discard pile, this is going to be a field day, and a big field day, because Nathan knows yep. his hand is stacked for Dre. Let's pal pad, put this Eerie back into the deck, and then just quick search for it, and have another great selection of items to discard. This is like a kid in a candy store here. You, what do you even choose from? You've got so many delicious options. Yeah, and I mean, uh, Dre probably knew another Eerie was coming, so I'm very surprised he didn't choose to at least play one Super Rod to replenish the deck, but it's like, Getting those Pokemon back in there are not is not really going to help you. At this point in time, you're running out of resources. You're running out of switching cards, Super Odds, your Mirage Gates. If they're activated, like you'll have a few energy in play, but you just lost the possibility with one Super Odd in the Lost Zone. And two over here, that's one Super Odd left, and we saw the Pokestop discard two energies and the Roaring Money Axe itself. This is very tough. You've got to feel for Dre and... I mean, it could be, we're only 10 minutes into this round, but especially against Control, this could be yeah. a realistic spot where you concede this game and try and win too, because where are you really getting to with the tie? You cannot play for that as your win condition. You've got to be having day two, 
on your horizon, on your sights, especially in this position. Andre is able to find his second and last Colrose experiment at this point until he takes some prizes. He will be able to rush gate as well. Did find the four seal stone, I believe, as well. So we might be actually seeing some aggression, but choosing not to play the Colrose yet, actually. And you know as soon as a Lost Box player tanks, that flower selecting is tough. Looks like an energy card and maybe another piece, and we're just going to have to see more resources hit the Lost Zone, deciding to keep that Pal Pad. Yes, having Colrose is great. It's a super powerful card you want to play as much as you can, but what is your Colrose going to find you if all your energy cards and powerful items are gone? I mean, that's a good start, right? Lost Vacuum to get rid of the Hero Scape. Uh, way to switch, I believe, to attack with Raikou. You activate the Mirage Gate, you should have one Lightning Energy in the deck. So we might actually see a knockout and some aggression finally. This it's is where you would yeah. love to have the Prime Catcher to knock out your opponent's Pidget, but of yeah. course, like, you want to hold it for a moment, but your opponent's not going to let you do that. It's very tough because, I mean, that play is very realistic. You can knock out the Snorlax, but that's just to take a prize, and your opponent has Luxray available if they just gust a Pokemon up and then discard everything, then things get very, very tricky. And yeah, things are looking very, very grim for Dre. I'm sure he's been in positions like this before. I'm sure this game is still winnable. The Spirit Tomb does come down off the prize card, so that will shut off Rotom. But I think there's actually a world where playing this Hisuian Heavy Ball, showing your opponent that you have Rotom, or rather that you have Spirit Tomb in a game that is already so hard for you to win, it would just be better to not give that information, force your opponent into benching Rotom, and just not getting value off it later on in game two. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. That, that's an unnecessary piece of information at this point in time. I mean, if you were knocking out Pidgeot here, then it would make a lot more sense, mm -hmm. right? You knock out Pidgeot, you deny the Rotom, then you might be able to slow them down enough. But at this point in time, it's just not looking great. And Counter Catcher will now be activated after Dre takes this knockout and... Those comfies are just going to be living in the active for a while. They're not going to be too comfy, I don't think. <laughs> they're they're going to be moving in and out. Not where you want them to be. Flower selecting is great, but what else does that provide? We will see the pal pad get played. And this is another situation where Dre has yet to draw into that boss's orders. If he could have kept that boss's orders available, then all of a sudden comfy can just retreat out of the active spot. That's no longer needed. We're going to actually see one more Mirage Gate get played. And this is actually really interesting because... Dre could have used this first Mirage Gate to, or couldn't have actually, because it's two Lightning Energy, yep. and deciding to just put this energy on Spirit Tomb knows that it is a potential trap target if you have no more energies available, and that looks like it is the case for Dre in this situation. Now that Force Seal Stone could give Dre an extra resource later. We do see the switch. That is, I believe, the fifth switching card out of eight potential ones, bearing any price cards, so... We're going to see some aggression. We might even see the Fleet Foot. Oh, no, there's no Fleet Foot because of Spirit Tomb. But we finally have the first knockout 13 minutes in, Ethan. And Colrus wasn't even drawn. <laughs> that is very unfortunate. But this is what you got to do. You got to do all you can to put on some aggression with these Pokemon, despite your board on the opponent's side looking so strong. And this is going to be a field day for Nathan. Now, all of a sudden, these Prime Catchers are activated. Luxray can attack and start using Fang Snipe to discard even more resources, and this hand will continue to grow and grow and build up even more card advantage. Nathan's got so many options at his disposal and looking to not even use Quick Search to start in turn, just going to play this Arvin, find out, find one of these Pokemon item cards and a Pokemon tool card. And it looks like Bravery Charm and Ultra Ball, so what Pokemon could Nathan be looking to grab at this position? I mean, perhaps another Snorlax, but yeah, he does have a Nest Ball as well, so... Choosing to discard the fire probably to activate the magma basin that he does have in his hand. Might even be looking into taking a KO. No, that's not possible. Uh, maybe getting a Charizard, a Radiant Charizard ready for a follow-up in case the Lux rate does go down. Those are the things that come to mind. No, it's Entei, actually. It will be a return KO then. And they can do it. And take could knock out this Pokemon. And I don't even dislike this play here from Nathan. Why get disruptive when your opponent yeah. can barely establish more resources? But I think the question here is, can Nathan find everything? Oh, I guess there is a Bagel Basin, and we haven't seen Quick Search be used yet. Yeah. So that is very much an option here. We're actually just going to see another Pidgeot EX come into play. This is, while you can only use one Quick Search per turn, mm -hmm. this ensures that if for some reason this Pidgeot goes down, 
you're going to have another one backed up, and you're going to be able to keep using Quick Search every turn until you run your opponent out of resources. Yeah, I think Nathan is just playing super, super cautious. Knows he has a big advantage, and he has a nest ball to just search for that Entei. So Magma yeah, Basin perfect. to power up. And as you mentioned, yeah, taking knockouts is a way of disruption, right? You eliminate these resources. Dre will have no real threat. He also played pretty much, uh, or he played a lot of Mirage Gates, uh, one for basically nothing. He's lost three super odds. He has the Roaring Moon in the discard pile. There's just so much going against Dre. How do you even knock out the Zente at this point in time? It's going to be tough, especially because Jeez. we just saw so many of those Mirage Gates get burned as well. Yeah. So here we go. Burning Rondo taking the knockout onto Rykovi. What do you do if you're Dre? I generally don't know. You're no longer trapped by Snorlax. And look, like, Nathan's field is full of two prized Pokemon, right? No Mimikyu, no Snorlax, which are the usual suspects in these sort of control decks. But at this point in time, there's just really nothing left for Dre. No resource in his hand. And there's no one card that this other Confei could get you here because even the Colruses are prized. We did see those get put back into the deck with Palpad, so that's still an option, but... If you have one Super Rod left, I, there's no energy in play. And the only Pokemon that can knock out this Entei because of that Bravery Charm would be something like a Roaring Moon, Frenzied Couching. And even then, your opponent can just attach a double turbo energy to their Pidgeot, knock you back out, and you're in the same spot you were. But now you are legitimately at zero resources. But Dre, still going to keep fighting, still going to keep trying, and does draw into a fairly nice selection of cards. Can get rid of the Manaphy and the Town Store. You've got to kind of keep your other options available, especially without having Chorus available. Uh, so there is that last Super Rod, but the question for me, with how many energies are in the discard pile, is that even an option? It's yeah. not. A little bit later than I would have liked to see Trey scoop things up, but it's what he had to do. He played to his outs. However, precious time off the clock, and Nathan goes up one game in nothing. Yeah, one very dominant game for sure. Like, that early setup was picture perfect for Nathan, not as great for Dre. I think if Dre had had that lightning energy in the beginning of the game, I was able to, like, pressure without playing anything else. He might have been in a slightly better spot, but then you have to deal with the Mimikyu, which you do have Cramorant, right, which we didn't get to see. So I think Dre definitely has a good chance in this matchup. It's just this game was just completely out of control. And it's all thanks to Eerie. Discarding those cards, you see just the, the speed up process there. I love that. That was awesome. Prime <laughs> Catcher hit the discard pile, and from there, everything started to snowball. Ryko was able to get in there a little bit, knock out that Storlax, but I'm sure Dre was not expecting all that aggression, all that effort to power up Ryko to immediately be answered with this Entei V. Yeah, I don't think you expect that much of aggression when you're playing against control, right? Like, the expectancy is, okay, they can Luxray, they can attack with Pidgeot, but an Entei completely out of the blue, that's not very common. That's your pick, right? And that's probably something that's exclusive to its last regional in Los Angeles. So going to the second game, Trey will be starting things off. What adjustments does he need to make in terms of how he plays his opening turns to respond to what Nathan is trying to put together in this opening early game? I mean, conserve switching cards as much as you can, of course. Uh, get to the Cramorant. I think Cramorant is a great Pokemon to pressure with because you don't need to invest any resources and you can immediately start pressuring Snorlax, Pidgeot, whatever is in the active spot, right? To save your resources for the other more in, uh, energy intensive Pokemon now. Getting there does require you to have, like, that Colrus in your starting hand, which I don't think I saw from, uh, for Dre in this game, too. So, I mean, you have to make your resources count, right? Like, that's the main thing. You have to make sure that you know you're going to lose a few resources to area and your opponent's disruption, but whatever you have left, you need to make sure that you are pressuring your opponent every single turn. Clock winding down, just over 30 minutes left, and... He wants to win this set. He's got to win a very fast game, too. He has got to put on a lot of aggression very, very quickly. This one Mulligan card will help. We'll take a look at the prize cards, see how things have updated. Is that Luxray V in the prize cards yet again? As well as some other resources, but nothing too, too relevant. I think we're going to have a good game here, Pablo, as Trey kicks things off. And this hand, yet again, is just 
really not as strong as Dre needs it to be. These opening turns, you can retreat your comfy. There's no relax in the active spot. You really need to take advantage of the pre-time before your opponent gets set up, starts playing Arvin and puts these Pokemon into play. And when you're not starting Comfey, when you're not using a bunch of flower selectives early on, it really is going to hurt you as the game develops longer and longer. Now, I really wonder if Dre chooses to put the Spiritum down. He, uh, he already has a Colrus in hand, so I think your opponent already started with a potentially less than ideal Pokemon, and setting up the Pidgeot out of the blue is not the easiest thing. They'll probably need to draw a few extra cards, so I really would like to see the Spiritum get immediately benched as a way to be like, okay, I'm going to slow myself down this turn, but I'm also going to slow you down pretty much for the rest of the game, right? And that will allow me to hopefully catch up before it's too late. If I don't have the callers in my hand, then I don't go for that. But with the callers in hand, I feel like you can wait to Lost Zone one card, yeah. right? Yeah, you shut off Luminion as well. You shut yeah. Luminous Sign off. It feels like such a good trade-off. But here you go. I mean, we could see Poffin still. Don't count yeah. Trey out of it yet. This would be the probably the best case scenario. I would have also liked to see Dre maybe just retreat that Cramorant instead, save that switching card. Yeah. That way you give yourself a little bit more flexibility and will keep the boss's orders, pass the turn over to Nathan, and you see Nathan just breathing a sigh of relief here that he can use that Ultra Ball in hand and find one of these powerful V Pokemon with those abilities. Yeah, probably gotta be Rotom, right? Puffin for Double Pidgey, get that Rotom, get extra cards. But yeah, if there had been a Spiritum on the bench, Nathan's hand would be honestly pretty dead, right? Exchanging some words, you know, uh, very valid point there. It does a little feel, it does seem a little bit exhausting to always be price checking control. We saw his, <laughs> earlier on Isaiah Bradner took all that time to separate the Pokemon to the front and the back of the deck, but that's a trade off you make when you're playing a control deck that's got a lot more routes and lines, even than a deck that people would consider to have that loss zone. Yeah, price checking for control is probably the hardest, right, out of all, because not only do you need to recognize which pieces you need for each matchup, but then also you play so many single cards. Like, even here, we have Nathan's deck list, and it's two pages long. So uh, very important to make sure you know which resources you have access to, because you have very specific lines of play, and if one piece is missing, you might not be able to go for it. And you see Nathan just say he's so grateful Spiritomb didn't hit the board because this would be a completely different game. Now Nathan can take the opportunity to get this Illuminion into play, grab the Arvin, and you see Nathan shuffling the deck, and that's because he's got an even better supporter card to play, the Eerie on turn one. And there are a lot of great options to select from what item cards will Nathan decide to discard immediately the switch card, and now comes the choice. Do you target the gates or do you target the rods? And it seems like pick your dessert at this point because they're both great cards to go after yeah for sure both cards very fantastic resources you can only put pick two out of those three switching cards are a given but i like the choice of Rashgate given the context of dre's hand right he has a comfy in play he has a colrez probably getting more stuff out but we do see that puffin one turn too late i really wish dre had just waited been patient we wouldn't have seen luminion he would have still seen the airy but then he'd be facing a Charizard and two PGs, yeah. and that's it. And it would have been fine. You have boss's orders in your hand. You can start yeah. to slowly target these Pidgey down as the game goes on. I'm sure that's something Dre is going to be kicking himself about over a little bit, seeing, ah, why didn't I just grab that? It really wasn't worth the one card. It's hard to always have information that your opponent does not have pieces in hand to make things work, but you've got to have that insight. You've got to see what your best conditions are to win the game. Finally, though, that Poffin comes down. And it feels like it's still better late than never. Getting Spiritum into play, shutting off Rotom from coming down later on seems like the best option. And it will be that selection, along with the second Comfey from this Buddy Buddy Pop. Indeed, that will allow Dre to potentially get to four cards in the loss when he has the switching card to pull it off. And then uh, Cramorant, unfortunately, even though it's water type, its attack doesn't apply weakness, so that Radiant Charizard will be able to take a hit. And honestly, at this point, Nathan's pretty content yeah he has the arvin he has a follow-up very handy plus four seal stone to get pitcher the x out and there's very little dre can do now dre is holding that boss's order so if nathan's start is continues to be slow and there's no shot at rotom replenishing resources in the hand right then there is a potential for dre to pull off a raikou ko on the pigeon and start slowing nathan even further 
So we'll see what these flower selectings grant. Now that Hoopa that was kept the previous game, I think Dre understands, I'm really not gonna use this card enough. It will hit the Lost Zone, so we're slowly building things up here. Let's not count things out yet. If Dre can find maybe a Lost Vacuum and a way to get another card into the Lost Zone, like a Stadium card or a Tool card, then we could see Moonlight Shuriken target down those Pidgeys, and that would be a huge tempo swing in this game. Yeah, that would be an amazing situation for Dre to be in. Yeah, it's like, okay, fine. I didn't Spirit Tomb, you got your Arvin, and then I knock out your two Pidgeys, and that Arvin's pretty useless after that. Oh, and that, he found the two perfect cards there. Pokestop lost vacuum off the concealed cards. And the question now is, does Dre have the resources to make this work? And you see him playing quickly. I think he understands this is what he needs. And fights Double Mirage K and has super rotted hand. Bye-bye, Pidgey. Say goodbye to the birds. We're no longer in winter. We're no longer in summer. It's the winter now. It's getting chilly out here. It's raining. It's pouring. The birds are gone. And Greninja is getting in there and taking knockouts on Pidgeys. So far here, an excellent start for Dre, getting on the aggressive. This is exactly what he needed to do in game two, and he is doing it to a T. Well, that card in the Lost Zone that we were very critical of seems to have paid off. So very nice for Dre, the very incredible, honestly, draw by concealed cards. Just really got him there. And even considering just putting another energy, and I don't even hate this yeah, here. We I just like put that. this water energy onto the Radiant Creninja, and with this Charizard in the active spot, it means if Pidgey comes down again next turn, you, get two you more take prizes. another two. That is incredible. What a find there for Dre. All of a sudden, after such a rough game one, puts himself all the way back into the second game. Let's go, Dre. Getting this knockout, knocking Pidgey out, and with Spiritomb in play, it means that Nathan's going to have an extremely hard time Getting this Pidgeot up into play with what Dre has put together on his board. Now, Nathan might be thinking, why didn't I discard uh, that Super Rod instead, right? Because he got the Mirage Gate discarded. And, I mean, was that Super Rod cr clutch to pull this off? I don't think it was played. No, it was just no, kept okay, in the hand. Okay, so never it mind. didn't even matter in this situation. So there was very minimal counterplay Nathan could have done. I mean, Dre ended that turn with four Mirage Gates in his hand because yeah. he already had the double gate. <laughs> Just hit even more there off that Pokestop. So now we're going to see our Narvin, and what can Nathan do? I mean, Dre hasn't even used that many resources at this point, right? Um, to justify, like, trying to trap something in the active with Snorlax or whatnot. And you know the threat of Greninja to snipe any potential Pidgey you recover is still there. So what does this Nestful even find you at this, at this point? <laughs> Nathan... Is maybe looking to find something like Luxray. You can start to fang snipe, maybe put some aggression on. And if you're Nathan, I think this is a situation where you probably just concede the game and you go to game three. You need to win a long game to get yourself into day two. I think it's conceding time here. I I, I would agree. I mean, he's eyeing up the cloth yaks, half has that ability to discard energies from his opponent every time they get attacked, but. Is that really enough? I mean, with so many Mirage Gates exhausted, maybe, but yeah, I mean, Nathan shaking his head. What can you even do at this point? No, it seems like he's gonna stick it out. You never know what your opponent's holding on to. Could maybe bring up something like that Spirit to force a turn out for you to have to use Fade out, and then all of a sudden now your Rotom can maybe draw some more cards. You give yourself a little bit of flexibility, so I don't hate Nathan playing this out, but if this game goes a little bit longer and Dre wins it, I do not want to see another tie on the stream. Nathan, you, you guys cannot do this to us, please. We tied way too much today in day one. I know, we've seen so many ties so far. And, all right, we're going to see uh, Flying Snorlax to the active Pokemon. Can become a Hero Snorlax with a Hero Escape, but, I mean, you're trapping your opponent's attacker, so... What is the plan here? And there is a boss's orders in the hand for Dre. I don't know if this is a situation where you want to use boss, but as it stands right now, the hand is really not looking too great. It does have that super rod, though. So this could be a potential where those mirage gates, those extra gates that were found, can be used to re-power up another moonlight shuriken or maybe pivot into a different Pokemon. And it will just be three energy cards going back into the deck. And the choice now, what do you want to power up? We're actually going to see the Iron Hands come down into play. And this is a potential 
big swing here for Dre. If he can pull this off, we could maybe see the Iron Hands use Ampu very much throughout the game, or even something like Arm Press could be very solid. It could knock out the Snorlax and then threaten Amp on the following turn. That would be very impressive to see now. Does decide to power up the Greninja with the extra energy. Might be setting up the Snorlax itself, right, to be amped to very much the following turn, which can be played around with the Hero Escape. And I do believe there's one Rush Gate still left to go, right? That was the third one prize. We do see the boss order, so we're gonna take down the Charizard this turn and establish the Snorlax in range. Yeah, and even if Nathan is able to put on something like a Hero's Cape, it's actually in perfect range to be knocked out by an arm press. So this sets up that math as well. Big top deck there, yeah. pointing that out. I could tell as soon as the inflection of your voice <laughs> with that Iono, and that is what Nathan is going to have to try and find. Something off of these six cards to put himself back into this game. Does still have access to that Super Rod. Did not see that in the prize card. So something like Super Rod plus some Pokemon Search or one of those cards. We could see the Four Seal Stone, but there's no Super Rod, no Nest Ball in this hand. So no matter what you use that Four Seal Stone, Star Alchemy, V-Star Power for, you're not going to be getting Pidgeot set up in the near future as things stand. Well, there is a Nest Ball in oh, there hand, is a actually. Nest Ball. Oh, so wow, okay. Yeah, Super Rod back in that Pidgey, possibly the Radiant Charizard as well. And then you're able to establish the Pidgey. And now, because the attachment was on here, um, then this Greninja is probably no longer a threat. But no, Nathan doesn't seem like he wants to commit to the recovery of the Pidgey here. So Dre was now put down to just four cards in hand. We're just going to see concealed cards continue to just draw through the deck. Find more cards, more resources, and finds the Prime Catcher. Okay, that's a good card to have in hand, but Trey has now played three Mirage Gates, so I believe it's only left with just a single Mirage Gate available. We'll see the manual attachment to this Iron Hands. Just looking through the discard pile. Always got to keep track of what resources are available. There is another Super Rod, so we are just going to see Dre put back in this Sableye as well as some energy cards. Because at this point, with how Dre's hand is shaping up, he's more than happy to just, over the next couple of turns, maybe draw into some energy cards and start building this Iron Hands up to put on a lot of pressure to Nathan's board. Yeah, I mean, you definitely have time, right, against Nathan's currently slow start. So eventually finding the boss wins you the game. Now, Nathan had a Nest Ball and a rare candy and an Arvin in his hand. So if we had seen the Pidgey hit the board last turn, we would already be seeing Pidgeot. And I think we would be in a very different situation. And there may be a piece unavailable that we might not know of. This is where things get tricky as we try and dive into the minds of both of our players. What is Dre thinking about this spot? Does he feel the need to play a switching card and use flower selecting to dig a little bit or just get in and start attacking with Cramorant? Spit innocently. Thanks to that Hero's Cape will not knock out this Snorlax, but it's slowly putting it in range next turn to be knocked out. And Dre is trying to line up some easy prize cards for the following turns. I love this for Dre. It's free pressure. You dedicate your resource to making sure you continue to apply pressure. You have a big advantage and you don't want to let go. You don't need to attack with Iron Hands. You just need to make sure you pressure, pressure, pressure every single time. Your opponent can't boss and Arvin to set up and Penny all at the same time. And with no Rotom and no Pidgeot, eventually your opponent's going to whiff a way to heal or a way to get out of the active. Still no Super Rod. Is the Super Rod prize maybe? There's only one copy. It might be that it's prize. Oh, no, I it's in it. there. Yeah. So why are we not setting up the Pidgey? Maybe he's just afraid that if that Pidgey comes down, it could open up a I mean, yeah, Prime Catcher play. That resource hasn't been exhausted, but it, it really... If there's I, I Prime Catcher, it's going to be the Luminion for a game, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so... I mean, I thought maybe he was trying to, like, penny the Hero Scape and attach it to the Pidgey so that he could guarantee its survival no matter what. But, I mean... Now the Nest Ball is gone, so we can't do that play anymore, and it's all on Snorlax, and with no Rotom to back it up, I'm not sure how good Snorlax is going to be. Yeah, and you can Penny Loop here and try and figure out some way to slowly buy yourself time, but that would only be good if you were using Quick Search every turn or using yeah. Rotom, and that's just not an available option. Nathan just trying to buy himself a little bit more time, recycling that Hero's Cape, 
using Penny as the supporter for turn to pick up that damage, Snorlax. Now the question here for Nathan, do you rebench this other Snorlax? Do you already commit the hero's cape? Do you wait a little bit? And we're finally gonna see the Forest Seal Stone get used. And this makes me wonder what card is gonna be the choice. And it's gonna be Hisui and Heavy Ball. And this could maybe sit, maybe explain here for Nathan if he wants to go for something either like the Reggie Aleki that's in the prize cards or that Luxray with Fang Snipe. So it does have a few options to choose from. We'll see what Pokemon he was really upset about not having in the deck earlier on. We saw him make a remark about that. Yeah, we'll have to see what his choice is. And now that Luminion, though, is still being threatened by the Iron Hands, and I'm sure Nathan would have loved to use the Penny to pick that up, but instead had to heal the Snorlax because Dre is applying that pressure. So even though your opponent denied you that price card, this Cramorant is going to be huge. And do see the choice is Regilecki, so what can you recover at this point that's so crucial? Well, if Nathan was going to want to recover a card this turn, could have just used the Forest Seal Stone first bench the Regieleki and then use... Oh, it's still possible. There's a Jet Energy in hand, so it works out yeah. either way with how it is. I mean, you can just bring Penny back every turn. If the Cramorant can just hit into you over and over again, you can slowly rebuy yourself some time. Sorry. It may just be Nathan's best situation in this situation, so... We'll yeah, that's true. Yeah, with the Jet Energy, you technically have a perfect uh, Regieleki that cannot be KO'd, mm -hmm. um, other than by Roaring Money X, right? So and with his Iron Hands now in the active spot, it's really not doing much. Even another Lightning Energy means that because of that Hero's Cape, Arm Press will not be taking a knockout. And we're just going to see an attachment for turn and a pass. So, hey there, after Dre's really strong start, getting rid of those two Pidgey in play with that powerful Moonlight Shuriken, we're seeing Nathan start to slowly clean his board up. That Penny again, just picking these Pokemon back up. And maybe eventually Nathan can find a Super Rod to put Pidgeys back into play and really put the tempo back into his favor. Now we did see Dre top decked another Lightning Energy, so we can see the Arm Press, but as you mentioned, Nathan has the perfect look here to make it so that Dre cannot KO. I think Dre's going to need to use Spiritums fade out at some point mm -hmm. to clear up a bench space and have the possibility to power up a Ring Moon, because as it stands, that Regieleki cannot go down no matter what. And we see the Prime Catcher get used, getting aggressive here with Flower Selecting and Colrus, but I don't think there's any way now to move this Comfey out of the active spot. No, not in this hand. We saw concealed cards get clutch earlier on. Will it be clutch again? It will not. And because of this block ability, things are going to get very, very tough. Yeah, it seems like Dre um, locked himself a little bit. I think, I don't know, like, Spiritum's attack is definitely not something you think of a lot mm -hmm. in terms of opening up a bench space or uh, whatnot, so maybe Dre doesn't see it, but I generally think that was his only chance in this, at this point in time, yeah, because Nathan can choose Penny forever. It's going to be tough. This is what happens when you're board locked in the position, and this is where Chet Energy Regieleki is such a powerful combo. You usually need that consistent pivot every turn. It's just going to be a pass over, and Nathan will get to just play some more supporter cards, and if he so chooses to, can just start to rebuild this loop up, or now doesn't even need the Pidgeot because there's no hand disruption. You can just find the cards you want with your other supporter cards, like Arvin, and then just bring them back over and over and over again. Yeah, what a comeback, honestly, by Nathan. Seems like... He knew why he wanted to stick in this game as long as he found this combination. And the other thing is that against Lost Box decks, you know your hand's not changing, right? You will accumulate those resources even if it's one card at a time. And that's exactly what's happening here. And Nathan doesn't even necessarily need to pivot the Snorlax out of the active. It's no. fine just yeah. sitting here. It can take a hit and then Penny can come down. If it doesn't take a hit, then you've got flexibility to play Eerie, your Misfortune Sisters so many different options so nathan prove me wrong here there's no time to scoop when reggie alecki can become your savior your bailout in this situation heroes cape jet energy a combination many people maybe weren't expecting to deal with on reggie alecki but that's how bringing trainers back every turn can just be so powerful in the standard format and just in the history of the pokemon tcg now that prime catcher i really have to wonder what was dre planning like why did he need that one extra card at that point in time and we're gonna see the coal rest. there are switching cards left as well uh, there's a roaring moon available which i think is 
trades only hope as we see the Colreds and the Nest Ball hit the loss zone. And this is tough here for Dre. Every time you're going to play these super odds, try and bring more energy back. I mean, there's four energy essentially locked up on this Iron Hands right now that yep. just can't really have anything be done to it at this point. So we're just going to see Super Odd put some more energies back in. And will it just be the fade out from the Spirit Tomb? And it's a trade-off you have to make. You allow something like Rotom or Luminion to be back online, but if your opponent's attacking every turn, it's a trade-off you've got to make. We'll see if there's an energy card in hand yet. And it looks like there isn't quite an energy. And we're just going to see the switch card into this Iron Hands, but Dre should have the information that there's a penny in the hand. And because Nathan is behind on prize cards, that defiance best will mean that this uh, Snorlax is not knocked out. And here we go, Pablo. The loop is starting. Penny to pick up the Snorlax. Bring Regieleki up. Use that ability. Now, one thing that we have to consider about this loop that isn't guaranteed, though, is Lost Vacuum to remove something like that Hero's Cape. It would put it in range of being knocked out by arm press. And we know Dre is playing multiple copies, two of those lost vacuums. So that's gotta be a resource we keep our eye out for. Yeah, there's one One has been utilized so far, but the question is, is the other one available to him? I do believe it is, but I really would have liked to see Dre clear out the bench space and then start doing this. You see Dre in the tank thinking a little bit, is it worth using concealed cards to dig through my deck? How much do I really value giving my opponent extra turns every time to play this? And we're finally going to see the energy come down onto Spirit Tomb. You can't really retreat this Iron Hands because then you lose all yeah. those energies that are put onto it. So it feels one like a turn. little bit too late, unfortunately. Yeah, one turn too late to have that energy on the Spirit Tomb. And we did see Dre attach that energy the previous game, right? So mm -hmm. maybe... It's just an attachment, and he hasn't realized that the fade-out is a good option, or, as you mentioned, it's a little too late, and we'll need to dedicate another switching resource, which I'm sure Nathan is keeping track of to make sure that if he can run Dre out of resources, out of switching cards, then either of this Comphase phase or even the Greninja can be trapped in the active by the Snorlax. So he has multiple ways to do this, sort of lock here. Yeah, and one more turn for Nathan is all the difference. It means he can bring back Penny this turn, and if he gets an extra turn by trapping something like Radiant Greninja, he can bring that counter catcher back the following turn, and then from there, Trey is eventually just not going to have enough resources to be able to play a switch card and attack every turn, and the more cards you let Nathan bring back, the more advantage he's going to have at closing this game out. There, we're going to see that Regilecki jet itself into the active spot. I don't think we have seen this exact loop in uh, on stream before, and it's really cool to see. Yeah, cool indeed. And we're just actually going to see the sonar be used right now to bring Penny up. Question I have though is Na when does Nathan want to commit to playing that counter catcher in hand? Is he waiting maybe for Spirit Tomb to come out of play and then trap something else in the active? We're going to see we go. this board here and there's finally find the switch. So we'll see the fade out for 10 damage, but this is essentially granted Nathan an extra turn at this spot. Yes, you clear the bench space, but you're down a lot of resources. You can bring up this Iron Hands into the active spot again, but now Nathan has free reign to grab another trainer card out of the discard pile. Something like that counter catcher, maybe one of those Arvin, more ways to search Pokemon out. There are a lot of options. So many options. This Regilecki is so, so powerful. We do have a counter catcher already in the hand, but yeah, getting it back is pretty good and pretty annoying for Dre, right? How many switch cards and switches are we down? I would love to know that amount, but we see the penny immediately. It's a very interesting decision. Now it's full on block mode and no longer radar. Yeah, can just start to say, look, you're down so many switch cards that if I just leave my board as only Snorlax, I don't think you have enough ways to knock out two Snorlax. You can maybe play one more. And I think Trey may not have any switching cards left and he does not. Nathan making a full 180 after getting both Pidgey knocked out. He does what he needs to to close out game two. Nathan Ginsburg will advance to day two here in Los Angeles. Pidgey's less control taking the win here. <laughs> in this win and in and honestly we saw uh 
I don't know how the deck can adapt so quickly. Nate